This is a great suggestion from a viewer for this matchup. Buffalo Trace Bourbon versus Michter's Small Batch. Around me, Michter's is way more available. Does a lower entry proof and slightly higher proof point from Michter's take down the Buffalo? We're about to find out. It's double base. What's up folks, I'm Jason Steen. Welcome back to the Mash and Drum. Like, subscribe, share. Welcome to today's double bass episode. If you have any suggestions for some head-to-head -head matchups, leave them below in the comments. Let's learn a little bit more about both contenders in today's matchup. Buffalo Trace Bourbon came about when visitors walked into the newly renovated Buffalo Trace Distillery in 1999 and asked, why isn't there a bourbon called Buffalo Trace? Ultimately, after discussions with the legendary Elmer T. Lee, it was decided that he would fix that. So the result was Buffalo Trace, released to the market in 1999 and is made from the Buffalo Trace number no. one mash bill. Now, according to Buffalo Trace's website, the bourbon is batched from no more than 40 barrels at a time and is aged in the middle floors of various warehouses. Rumor, it's between eight to 10 years old, bottled at 90 proof and priced, if you can find it, about 30 to 40 bucks at retail. Michter's US 1 Kentucky Straight Bourbon, according to the website, is made from a carefully selected mash bill that is truly a small batch, with each batch being about 20 full barrels. It's non-H stated, said to be at least four years old. It's sourced, but nobody really knows where. It's bottled at 91.4 proof and retails in my area for about 45 bucks. All right, so I'm gonna mix these up a little bit. I could already smell how sweet they are from here. Holy crap. Speaking of sweet, let me introduce you to a brand new sponsor here on the Mash and Drum. It is my favorite new cereal, ladies and gentlemen, Magic Spoon. So you guys have heard me talk about tasting notes and whiskey that remind me of my favorite all-time cereals. Well, growing up cereal, I think was one of the best parts of being a kid. But you know, as I got older and I wanted to stay in shape, I realized I had to give up some of that because it was just full of sugar and junk that I really shouldn't be eating. Luckily, I found Magic Spoon, the high protein, zero sugar cereal that has reinvented your childhood Saturday morning cartoon favorites without all the crazy sugar. For me, it's the perfect cereal to have either in the morning before I work out or to fuel back up after I work out. Magic Spoon comes in four delicious flavors. Their variety pack comes with cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. All the flavors your inner kid will love. They're all good, but my favorite thing to do is to mix the chocolate and the peanut butter together. You guys know you all think the same thing when I said chocolate and peanut butter. Crunchy, sweet, no sugar, high protein, delicious. Magic Spoon cereals have zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. Each serving is around 140 calories. They're also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, and soy free. So start the new year off right with Magic Spoon. Click the link below to grab your own variety pack of Magic Spoon cereal and try it today. Be sure to use the promo code MASH at checkout to get $5 off of any order or go to magicspoon.com slash MASH. Another great thing is Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So again, click the link below in the description and use the code MASH for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash MASH to save $5 today. Time to have some more. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring the Mash and Drum. So if any of you out there have never watched a double bass episode before, basically one of the glasses has to win in two of three categories, nose, palate, and finish. So I'll rate each one as I taste through them. Let's dive in. First one here, very sweet. Swedish fish candy in the nose, little powdered sugar, little bubble gum too. Man, it's got like this uh, like this vanilla cream soda thing going on too. Man, that's super sweet. Let's go to the second one here. Oh man, this one is... I'm getting like root beer and licorice on this one. What the hell? I do not remember that coming through from any of these whiskeys before. Interesting. Now I love root beer, but I am not a fan of licorice. <laughs> wow, yeah, this is sweet. This one is less sweet. I think that licorice note's starting to fade a little bit, but man, 
really, really, I thought these noses were gonna be a lot closer, but I'm gonna have to give it to the first nose. I love the root beeriness that I'm getting on uh, glass two here, but I love the flavors uh, off the nose on the first class, some letter, we'll just call it A. So let's try it on the palette. That's nice, that's as solid as they come for a bourbon flavor profile. Vanilla, caramel, a little bit of sweet. Again, I'm getting some of those nuances on the nose that I'm picking up on the palate as well. Candy, a little bit of bubblegum note. Good spice though, on the back end of that. Did not expect that. Another sip here. God, that is just candy in a glass. Now, the finish I think is going to be the toughest grading on both of these because they are lower proof. But what I'm really looking for is how long that flavor lasts on the, on the mid palate. Right now, this one is lasting a good amount of time. It's giving me everything I want and just a really good solid bourbon. I really wanted to do this blind because I just felt like Buffalo Trace, even the regular Buffalo Trace bourbon, it just, it's, Everything Buffalo Trace is just so hard to find these days. So, you know, would the Michter's small batch be a good replacement? Meh, we'll see. All right, last sip of this one. Yeah, the more you sip that one, it stays sweet, but there's a nice oak presence too that kind of lays over the whole thing. All right. I really like the palette on the first one. Let's go to the second one here. This one that was giving me like root beer vibes. Oh, but it's changed a little bit. It's gotten even sweeter. Oh, this will be interesting. All right, let's try this one. Okay. I feel like the palette on letter B here, the second glass, isn't as punchy as the first one. Now we do know that Michter's is only 1.4 proof points higher than Buffalo Trace. So is that really gonna make a huge difference? That's what I really wanna kind of find out here. Oh. The root beer and all that stuff I was getting in the nose, I am not getting on the palate. This is very sweet, powdered sugar, Look, this one's a little bit more baking spice uh, forward, a little bit more cinnamon, a little bit more heft on the palate as well. This, <laughs> this, is, this is a tough one. I like the palate on, this, on the second one, but again, it's not giving me enough punch that I think I'm getting on the first one. Back to the first one real quick. Yeah, the first one's giving me a little bit more punch on it. So I think I'm gonna have to give the palette to the first one as well. Which means already the, the first one kind of wins uh, just on nose and palette. Um, I even think the finish on the first one's a little bit better. So it's kind of a clean sweep for glass A here. Just need a moment to make sure I'm getting this right. Yeah, totally. This one has more punch of flavor, a little bit better spice on the palate. This one is very good, but it's just, it's kind of coming off very soft. But if you guys have watched my channel, you know I don't like soft whiskeys. I like it to really punch through and give me a bunch of flavor. So let's find out what glass A was. Let's see who wins. No shit. The Michters takes down the Buffalo Trace. Where, where in the hell was Buffalo Trace coming off like like root beer to me? It's not anymore. See, now I'm smelling it, now it's getting like grape. It's getting grapey. But yeah, I'm, I'm there is a little bit of a licorice vibe that I'm getting in this one. But yeah, I could see why, I mean, people love this bottle because it is easy to sip. It's very easy sipping, it's sweet. It's all those things, but I think the Michter's small batch has a little bit more going on. Now again, this could be younger. This is said to be eight to 10 years old. I don't know if this small batch would have that 
age of whiskey in it. Nobody knows. Um, it is a blend of 20 barrels, so is there something high aged in there with some other younger whiskey in it? We just we just don't know enough information. When it comes to the Michters, I think they I think the little bit of a higher proof point and the fact that it just had a little bit more punch, a little bit more spice is what won out over the Buffalo Trace. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this double base episode putting Michter's US1 small batch versus Buffalo Trace. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you guys have done this uh, comparison. Um, you know, it's it's very subjective to, you know, anyone's palate. But for me, I did like the Michter's a little bit better. And I think this would be a great alternative if I can never find Buffalo Trace. But this Buffalo Trace is still an absolutely delicious bourbon, especially for the price. Let me know down in the comments as well if you have any suggestions for any upcoming Double Bass episodes. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So, of course we blend them, like we always do at the end of every Double Bass, to see what would happen. Um, Michter's and Buffalo Trace, I'm not really sure how to come up with a name for that, so we're gonna call it, we're gonna call this the Muffalo, the Muffalo Trace. M Muffalo Trace, is that, is that a terrible name? It probably is. <laughs> All right, let's try Muffalo Trace. Oh, you know what? The beginning of that wasn't bad, but the finish, I got some like the grape and cherry and that little hint of like, like root beer I was getting on this today was like coming through, through the, uh, through the mixers, I think, but I still have the spice of the mixers there. Muffalo Trace, not a bad blend. Cheers guys.